DNA is like the recipe for making ourselves, for making any living thing, including humans. And studying that is, to me, more significant than like the moon landing. Right now, what we have in the world of genomics is every study is based on one genome. The first human genome that was released in the early 2000s is the foundation, it's the bedrock for almost all biomedical research and clinical genomics and studies of human histories that have happened over the last two decades. Yeah, it was a complicated early history of the Human Genome Project where they actually put an ad in a, in a newspaper asking for volunteers to submit blood. A few people signed up and got the chance, the lifetime dream to donate DNA for this study. But just by chance or by luck, one individual was represented about 70% of the time. Because of that, what we have learned is that it induces a reference bias. If you have an inadequate reference genome, one that doesn't properly represent differences that exist, it could lead to misdiagnosis, you know, a misunderstanding of what's going on in that patient. To be truly useful to everyone in the world, we have to have a resource that truly represents everyone. Well, we just made the first release of a pangenome. We were very careful in the title to say a draft pangenome. This is the first time it's ever been done, so this was a very kind of exciting moment. If you think about the original human genome as just being kind of a line, you can start thinking about the pan genome as being one of these beautiful subway maps. The human pan genome draft contains 47 genomes or 47 individuals who participated in the study. So by building this new data structure, utilizing all of these different paths, we can begin to trace uh, human haplotypes, human histories, and also shared differences that could be important for understanding how the genome works. To build a pangenome, you need to sequence as many individuals as possible from a diverse population. The process of DNA sequencing involves capturing 6.6 .6 billion base pairs of ACGNT from an individual DNA. And so there's a lot of sources of error just because we're dealing with the physics of a very small molecular level. But we can get around it partly by applying algorithms, or in this case, deep learning. The software that we have built at Google is Deep Consensus. It improves the quality of the data that you get from the sequencing machine. Deep Consensus is built on a transformer model, which is a deep learning model that's also at the heart of the large language models. The sequencing machine reads the same sequence multiple times. As the molecules are very small, some of the reads will still have errors. So we line up the reads against each other and deep consensus tells us what the more accurate answer is. Working with DNA sequencing data is a great use case for deep learning because we have lots of data and we do have some good ways to get at the truth, which is one of the hardest things when you're doing machine learning we would not be where we are today without advances in the sequencing technology and advances in the algorithms that go along with them. Our goal with the pan genome is not only to build hundreds if not thousands of near-perfect reference genomes, but to create a resource that's fundamental for research into the future. Without Google's tools, doing that just wouldn't be possible. I have great hopes that this pan genome can get us to a place where the promise of genomics can benefit everyone.